reconvening the meeting at 11.15am um, after what was a really nice special uh, presentation um, ceremony to local SES controller Adrian Grayling as well as a special citizenship ceremony for the Lima family, um, currently of Aramac. Uh, so that was really good. I feel privileged to have been able to undertake or oversee a third citizenship ceremony. It's a special achievement for a little remote government here, full stop actually. And we've had a number of them, a number of individuals at most of them, so yeah, we would we would combine those. Uh, we are at agenda item. Um, so just for the benefit of those who we are seeking that advice, uh, and Tim was out of the office until 11.30, um, he is pledging to immediately attend to it when he's back in the office, and he has the material to review that. So with your indulgence, there's two items where we have some um, concern around uh, councillors prescribed conflict of interest or otherwise. Uh, that will be deferred until after lunch to allow time for Tim's consideration further of the matter. Can I please have somebody move that we receive agenda item 3.3.1, the financial performance report. Council of Police and Second Councillor Arthur, that is in favour, 6 0. Dean, fire away. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, the report we have before us is providing a, um, a quarterly report, or well, first quarter, at the end of the first quarter of our budget. Um, we'll go into a fair bit of detail in the budget review on how we progress, but I suppose as highlights for us to mention um, the, the budget itself, we're tracking a fair bit under in the expenditure, around 80% uh, expended overall. That is, I suppose, somewhat probably uh, understated because of the flood damage works. So because we've got a fairly significant amount of flood damage in there, that work is commencing. So once that commences, we will see some larger numbers coming through um, in that space, which will then see that number pick up quite well. So if you take that out of the equation, we aren't that far below budget from an expenditure point of view. Revenue, similar sort of situation, because we do have all that flood damage revenue in there as well. Um, Close from the rates is certainly now rounded off. It finished in the middle of October, um, but was sort of the overall balance of our setting rates has declined now that we have um, the rates period closed. Fees and charges are tracking uh, relatively close to budget, slightly under at the end of September. Um, and the recoverable works, there is a few adjustments to do there as it does reflect the money um, that was outstanding from last year so that um, that that is progressing quite well at the stage as well so if we jump over to uh, Can I ask a question before we go off the page I'm sorry I'm distracted yeah. rates limits and charges the actual significantly over budget did we budget for the rates to be received in the, the majority of them in the second quarter did we yeah so the budget is worked out in the system it's based just based on the budget divided by 12 each month so oh. just adds another month in so effectively, um, yeah. given that it is quite, if you look at even at the original budget figure, which is 7.7 .7 million, yeah, that's still um, at the moment, a lot of that discount at the time of the report wasn't taken up yet because the rates period wasn't closed. So as the rates period closes, discount, when the rates levy goes out, it's raised, the full amount of uh -huh. levy is put in, put into rates and charges and recognised as revenue. Yep. And then it's just like a debtor account, then the money comes off as it's paid. But because it's a discount, that's only recorded as it's take as that discount's been um, taken up by the rate payer. So because a lot of the rates, majority of rates are paid towards the end of the rates period. Yes. Um, you you yes. you'll see that to reduce down in the hats effectively. Okay. And it's almost right. perfectly online. So that's just the accrual payment. basis that we the full value of the rates in, in a, and and it has to be recognised. Um, however, the discount reduces the actual receipt. Yeah, so, so, that, the 7750. so that 4.1 million includes all rates that are levied, the discount that's been granted, less the discount's been granted, less write offs, plus interest that have been charged on outstanding rates as well. So that all sits in that, that rate, which levies and charges line. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. 
Right. Sorry, that no, looks like everyone's going. We'll start on the first page. We're going to go to the deputy first. Um, Dan, the grants and subsidies and donations, that, um, is that the reason for that? Um, this, well, the Once reason for that being so le less, is that because we already had that in the bank in the last financial statement? Like, look, Budgeted 36, there are 36 million. Yes. But like, we already had that in the last budget. That's why that's so low there in that column of the actual column. Through the chair, so the budget, um, the budget that we did when we adopted it, um, at that point in time, we weren't mm -hmm. expecting to receive the prepayment for the federal assistance grant. Yeah. Um, I suppose the way we're looking at it now is that because we received that in June, we oh. expect to receive the prepayment for the 24-25 financial year in June next year. So that will pick up a fair chunk of that um, 36 million, about probably 11, 11 and a half million dollars. The, the remainder of that is, is the flood damage, flood damage money. So even though we've received some of that revenue already, there is enough to get the program finished and progressed. We need to deliver on a fair bit of that works this year and um, so it is recognising that works that will be, will be uh, completed and then the revenue subsequently recognised as well uh, yeah. for that work. It's playing with the But same, I suppose similar scenario to what Mayor just mentioned around the rates being under because it's on a monthly budget. It's just taken that 36 million and divided it by 12 to give you uh, a three months worth. That's why it's a bit high. Is that a limiting factor within practical that it doesn't allow you to, or is it just that it's a big body of work to attribute receipts and payments on a method other than just a monthly averaging? So the receipts and payments um, are sort of done on a per service basis. So for rates, you recognise those on an accrual basis. So when the rates are raised, um, that's when you recognise that revenue. Whereas like a fee and charge, you tend not to rate to recognise that until the actual fee or charge is paid. So depending on the piece of revenue. Although in this case rates are still being applied on a monthly basis. The budget. The budget. That's what I mean. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, the budget process I mean. Yes. Is there a way to make that a little bit more reflective or is that a limiting factor of the system? We can do it. It is It is a little bit limiting. The okay. system does have the capability but it is a fair bit of work if we went through the whole budget. Yeah, what, and, and would it throw things out considerably if you were to cherry pick the big ticket items for the one better phrase is to try and do to give like you know I'm not worried about rental income for example because it's such a insignificant mm. sum of money but but rates and, and recoverable works the grants. and grants for example we sort of well even recoverable works can vary a little bit kind of but those other two line items once we get into a regular we know they're going to be six monthly or quarterly or whatever yeah yes Mr Mayor so there is certainly that cap that capacity for us to be able to do that cherry picking the grants and subsidies contributions, you would recognise probably 20 million of 20 to 25 million of that on a monthly basis, being that it's the flood recovery money. Um, the remainder being the federal assistance grant, because we do expect 11 to 12 million of that in June next year. You would just separate that out on yep. its own. Okay. Um, who helps? Uh, that, that was the basis of my question. That as opposed to that monthly attribution of some of it, is it? Yeah, possible to have it even in a quarter as opposed to spread out because it does it wobbles the figures sometimes. Yeah. <coughs> oh, insurance, I suppose, from the expense side is is at the opposite end. I suppose the yeah. same thing. We pay it in one bulk amount in July. Whereas phone bills and PR and all them things, well, they're just all in quarter. Yeah. All right. Um, change the grass a little bit um, this month. Um, for the year to date um, to give us a bit more of a comparison. So we now have the year to date budget, the year to date actual, the actuals um, at the end of September and then also the annual budget to see the comparison. So um, yeah, just a slight change to the display there. I think I've been through most of that is the revenue in the expenditure space. Can I, sorry, can I ask a question? Employee benefits. Yes. Um, does that include, so is that, that's the holistic figure for what we pay, not 
differentiated between whether there's an element of that recoverable or not. Like that's just so what you see in the graph there on page 30, that is purely what money has been paid slash accrued or earned by an employee, like even their the leave loading and the, not leave loading, leave whole, annual leave and sick leave that they've incurred. That's that's the holistic amount. What's um, on their group certificates basically? So through the chair, the accruals aren't aren't in that employee benefits. Right. That's they, just cash. So as, as an employee, the on cost that the employee is, is I suppose, all that the business incurs as part yep. of the service is in that. Oh, that's in there as well. Yes. Yeah, right. So, yeah, yeah, what they've accrued in previous years is not in there, but what they're accruing as a result of their employment this year is in there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I suppose I was just going to mention with the expenditure, um, employee, employee benefits is on track there. Um, in line with budget, materials and services is slightly under at the moment, uh, but as as a large chunk of that materials and services is to do with flood damage, that's why um, that's why it's slightly under at this stage. A couple of those contracts we've awarded in the last couple of months are only just starting to get the work done. So, um, over in the maintenance space, um, you can see rural roads is certainly quite high at the moment, with just under fifty percent of the budget at the end of the first quarter has been expended. Um, the senior work supervisors um, did indicate during the budget conversation, the budget review conversation, that they are starting to switch over to flood damage works now. So we do expect that number to slow, slow slightly, um, but remain within budget at this stage. Town, town streets. Sorry, sorry, on dual roads. Is that any way also reflective of the fact that we've started not only in certain areas but in all areas almost run out of water? So is our um, maintenance cost for our rural areas being driven by the fact that the unit rates, and Kerry, it's a possible question for you, just because we're hauling water further, longer, you know, is that in that yet, or are we not yet, where, have we, the first quarter, not seeing the impact of that yet? Just starting to come in. Right. Just starting to be affected. Right. Thank you. Sorry, Dean. The um, town streets is, is a non budget there as well, and year to date budget. Plan operations is, is, slot, is almost smack bang on budget. Um, I do note there is um, insurance to be added, insurance in that as well. So that is quite, we are currently under budget in plan operations at the moment, which is um, a positive outcome year to date. And parks and gardens is slightly over budget, progressing slightly over budget at this stage. Uh, if we look at it, look at it. Back on the employee benefits. So, the, um, that's actually wages, like that's the wages. Is that all that's in that? Wages and on cost. Yeah. So, the on cost is sort of allows us to be able to contribute the accruals of leave and yeah. um, some of the other admin services that we need to support the employee. It's not contractors or anything like yeah. that. Just council staff. Council staff, yeah. Um, yes, it's council staff, but including those that are employed on contract, though. Yeah, it's important. So, CEO, for example, like senior yeah. executives, yes, yeah, yeah. we're all in there. <coughs> in the finance, statement of financial position, you can see quite a, the cash is slightly reduced this month, or in, in September, in the end of October. Um, that, I, I suppose it's sort of seen the end of the major, I suppose, inflows of cash that we've seen over the last probably four months, and we're starting to actually deliver on some of that works that we've been, um, we've got in contact. So a large amount of that 27 million is attributed to um, the trades and other payables, which is where that liability is sitting for the work that we have yet to complete. However, there is $5.2 million in receivables. Yes, Mr. Mayor, that, that would be the rates. It will be a large amount of that. So that cash is not recognised yet? because that period hasn't closed, so... No. So we recognise the cash when we get the cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the accrual of that is... So it sits in debt as once it's paid, it moves from receivables into cash. Would you expect the cash... Sorry, Councillor Roger. Would you expect the cash reduction next month to be offset somewhat by that chunk of receivables? Uh, yeah, somewhat, because we have also received... I think I mentioned in the report, we also have received um, some funding for...
uh, some of the LRCIP funding as well. So some of the yeah, some of the expenditure we've had has, has been offset by some additional cash payments we've received. Okay. The eight hundred and seventy-four thousand for that base three payment. Councillor Rogers, sorry, I am. Three, Mr. Mayor. The unrestricted cash. Um, so that what we've got here is that the restricted cash is sixteen point five. Yes. So. The unrestricted is the. It should be about twelve million or something. Just under twelve million. So is the in the unrestricted in the restricted cash is that the. Is the wage, um, you know, like the all of the um, holiday and the long service, what do you call that? The liability. No, the, yeah. Are they all in the restrict within that restricted, or is that in the unrestricted part? That's in the unrestricted part. Yeah. Councillor, the the restricted cash is those that we have contract yeah. contracts to deliver Not works for. That actual. Not the, not the general liabilities that we have. Yeah. Um, so if we just look at the cash um, progress there, at the moment we've still got all the cash invested in QTC, um, cash fund. The, the unrestricted cash expense ratio um, is showing 6.6 uh, .6 months as, as the ratio at the moment, which is above what our target range target is, which is four months. And the surplus cash, um, Ratio, which does take into consideration those, those accruals for the loan and also for the, the, the staff liabilities, um, we're sitting at eight months. So that is um, because it doesn't take out the restriction of cash for a capital project such as flood damage reconstruction. The surplus cash ratio. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So you, Mr. Mayor. So Dan, the way things are trending at the moment. Do you see our cash at the end of the year being better than what we predicted? Through the Chair, um, yes, Councillor, mainly, mainly due to when that Federal Assistance Grant comes in, yep. but I think um, our cash at the moment was forecast in the budget to be in a more positive position than it started, and I think we're still on track based on the expenditure there. The budget review with the staff, there hasn't been too many too many things been highlighted that are of an issue there. Um, and given that our federal assistance grant particularly, um, in the budget we budgeted 10.4 million. The payment we've got prior to in June was 11.4 million. So that's a that's million dollars of extra revenue we would expect to be getting that we've got in the budget. Okay, so, but probably even though we've, we've got that extra in the fags, we're probably still going to even have a from how it's looking to me, a better result than even that one million. Is that how you see it? Yeah, there's a more positive, yeah. Some of that is contributed to the under under expenditure at this stage yep. in some areas. Um, and I suppose the difference in the cash might will also come down to is some of the, some of the money that we have in our bank account that is restricted. Yeah. But if you take that out of the equation and we just looked at the unrestricted cash, I think we'll be in a better position. Thank you, Dan. Well, forecasters for that at the moment. Especially if they're transitioning the work on, you know, places like rural road to, like we, we have budgeted to expend two million, but if they're, we've spent a million and they're looking to shift flood damage for a host of reasons, well, there could be even savings in that budget. Well, that's a big positive if we can do that, Jim. So, Chair, as part of the Race to recovery, though we do have an obligation to spend some money in that space still, so um, but we're well on track to be delivering on that. This show that it's a um, positive yeah. shows if we, we look carefully and, and have a good look at it every year, we can make it a dollar two now. It's, it's a good, good result. Thanks, Questions other than those that we have done as we went? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, um, the audit financial statements, is there, is there um, what, what information is, is causing the difficulty? So, what, what is the difficulty in that? Sure, Chair. I think just with the change of staff, we've had some challenges in, I suppose, making sure that we've got financials comparative to last year. Also, um, different staff, different ways of doing things. Um, 
So part of that is not just about doing the financials for last year. We've spent, we've taken some considerable time to get our processes right for um, for the way for the 23, 24 year as well. And um, we saw that with when Heather was here. Andrew's been on board and largely putting those numbers together now for um, for, million, for about six weeks. So that is progressing well. We do expect to have the financial statements to the auditors this week. Um, they need about a month to do their end of the checks and balances. Um, and we're expecting to have an audit committee, um, audit committee looking at those at, um, those financial statements in very early December. So uh, I think that timeline's somewhat similar to last year. Um, not where I want to be. I'd, I'd rather be getting it all done by the end of October, as we're required. Um, I'm sure the CEO's not overly excited. We've had to apply for an extension, but um, it's just the way things have worked out this year. And, um, we've got some systems in place where we feel that going forward, we'll have we're in a lot better position for next year's budget, or next year's financial so. Um Not continue to hold anyone to the answer to the question, but is there an indication yet um, whether the deficit is going to reflect the budget of deficit or is it blown out? For this year or last year? For the financial statements that were prepared the statements. last year. I think we're looking at a, early, uh, a small, a very small surplus. So an improvement on budget? Yeah. Well, what, we did have that federal assistance grant coming. We did, yes. And the same thing happened the year before when we had 50% prepayment instead of a 25% prepayment. But, um, Results are positive. Provided that the audit doesn't materialistically change that to be able to hand down two deficit, two surpluses in a row about three years ahead of schedule is not a bad outcome. Yes. Further questions? Did we move and second that, Debbie? Yes. Yeah. yes. Community Care Services Report. Can I please have somebody move this council to receive this report? So people, second the council of one, those in favour? 7 0. Thank you. Dan. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Can't say I've had my head in, uh, in uh, community care services a lot in the last month to contribute too much more than what's written on the paper. Um, the services are largely progressing. Um, as per budget, in a lot of cases, we have received some of our funding a bit early. Um, some of I know, I know the community care team has done a fair bit of work, particularly in the CHSP area. Um, given that we are being monitored a lot more by the by the state government in, in the way that we're progressing in that space of expending the money that we've been funded or we've contracted ourselves to do, there's a um, the QCSS and the Trent. And the community transport programs have been ones where we've historically had had grants and funding programs in place where we haven't delivered on the quantity that's in those in those programs. Part of that does depend on us having those members of the community using that service. Um, at the moment, the, the QCSS program um, is only servicing one client. We were considering around the end of financial year of not renewing that agreement. Um, given that that client is unable to really access any other services um, in the health space that they were receiving as part of the QCSS program, um, Council has continued that. The state certainly encouraged that we are continuing that, uh, but I suppose we're well under what the funding is, what the funding is we could be getting from that program if we had more clients. The, the NDIS is certainly um, continuing to grow. Um, we're looking at resourcing in that space at the moment because of the growth that we've had in that space um, over the last 12 months particularly. So that is quite positive. Um, and also with our home care packages is, um, I suppose, in a lot better position from the way we're managing that as well. So that is really starting to see the, the flow of income coming in for the work that's being done a lot more efficiently than what it was previously. So, um, notwithstanding what you said about prepayments and is written in here, 
We're staring down a significant loss when I look at direct figures without looking at indirect costs via the projected annual versus annual budget. Like there's a three hundred or thousand dollar turnaround there alone. Is that going to be reflected by back end payments? And then if we factor in that loss and then look at the administrative overhead capacity there, we're for we're for going monstrous volumes of money to deliver state and federal government projects. I've bashed my head up and bashed everyone's heads about this in this room for years. And I know we're providing a service and we're using staff that would have other, would ordinarily be doing something else anyway. And I'm, I know all of that, but I still can't overlook a report that shows me uh, a unit of council that is supposedly fully funded, blowing away not much change out of half a million dollars. It just doesn't. People reading this report, which is anybody who bothers to jump on the website, see us. And, and, and you know, if it's not us at faulty, I'll repeat the question what is it that I need to do at a state or a federal level, probably predominantly federal, to ensure that we aren't losing that much money delivering their services or del delivering services to people in need in our community? I'm not for one minute foreshadowing that I don't want them to get it, but it's just a monstrous sum of projected money that we're going to kiss goodbye. Through the chair, the, the biggest sum of that money that is making up, I think it is the it really is the CHSP um, program. Um, I know we'll look into it in a bit more detail, but I am making the assumption that there's money that's being spent, but that's not yet been collected in grant funding or in, in contributions particularly. So if you have the numbers there um, in that space are seeing a lot more expenditure than what we've had um, in the income space. The home modifications is one example that is um, had a lot more work in there that we may not have yet built for some of that work. So, so that would be reflected in the line that's the net direct profit loss, though, would it not? Um, well, it's not recognised in income either. So it's showing an expenditure, like we spent 300000 in expenditure. Um, well, while income is at 448, we aren't expecting to be receiving um, four times that, I suppose, because we know we've received some grants in advance. So if you go on to the next page, Mr Mayor, that's the detailed CHSP there. So the income, you can see the 440,000 is, is the year-to-date in grant funding. Um, our projected annuals are still 710,000. But where I think we can get there's some additional money that's not yet collected is around the contributions line. Um, we've only collected 4,400 at this point, whereas some of our home modifications and some of the other work we've done are in excess of 150,000. So the statement line on the bottom where it shows a direct, direct loss is is really not truly reflective of what we know to be the case. Yeah, that would be correct, Councillor, I believe. The the um, the total expenditure at the moment is 300,000 and projected at 1.2 if we continue at this rate. Uh, we don't, I, I suppose we don't expect to be continuing at this rate mm -hmm. with all the home modifications that we've done there. That's a particular number that's well over budget. I know, I know we've been sort of busy with auditors and, and staff, but I guess it's, I mean, these reports are provided for council's oversight to track these things. If we, like, that's a big alarm bell, and I'm pleased to hear you with an explanation as to the fact that no, there's actually some recoverables and payments, and that may not continue. But when you only look at what's there in black and white, it's a big concern. That would be the worst result we've ever had if we got that far down. If we if we ended up losing in the order of four hundred thousand, I can't I can't recall. No. That said, we've never had it as accurately reported as we are getting to the point of either, but it's, you know, this, if we end up losing that much money or in that order, then someone at some level of government, whether it's directly or indirectly through LGAQ, have got to have an understanding for why councils, like no private service provider would lose that sort of money. No. Yeah, well, we're not. If that's the case, we're not claiming enough, or we've got to have, have a brief look at how we. Or the programs are ruling out.
costs that won't all, they won't allow us to recover, which could be you know could be a double edged sword. You know, maybe they need to tweak their their claimables. You know, including administrative overheads. That's the big one that I see as a as a. Any further questions? Three of missed me because, as Dan said, like that projected annual is basically just four times what we are for the quarter. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And that's similar to like the budget stuff. We stuff spread out over twelve months, but we probably know that's first quarter, third quarter, or third quarter, fourth quarter. But the way we illustrate it. We're, we're averaging stuff as opposed to putting it more closely to time based or w with better information because th that's an easy way to represent it, but it can be misguiding. And I guess it, it can be misguiding if it's rubbered as well to look better than it could be. But yeah, w whether we just need like that, I guess once you know that it's there, but like an explanation or an exception to say, look. At this stage, that is the projected base on on first quarter, and, and unless we know that we've either bought something or done like fifty percent more work than we normally do, and, and then whether we need to start looking at this, especially when the figures get to that much, as part of our proper quarterly review tomorrow too, to to readjust some of those budgets if we. Like, if we're confident the quarter is going to be replicated for the rest of the year, then we should probably amend those annual budgets as well. Yeah, well, I guess that's kind of what I'm saying, Councillor and Dan, that the, these business units, when they're reporting up to us, need to understand that when something comes through, even if it is averaged with a minus 400,000 in front of it, that we're going to get probably, mm. like, Notwithstanding, we just talked about the positive cash position. We don't have to lose four hundred thousand dollars a year for very long to go back to a position where we don't want to be. All right. Um, right. Three, four, one. Councillors, now you probably may not have known what that title meant, but we did start this at the last meeting. It's an opportunity to speak on behalf of an issue or a matter or. or community event or a charity or an organisation that's undertaken some work, so uh, go around the room, we'll start right in the middle. Councillor, it's... I think I'm right in spite of the obvious to me. Mr Mayor, yeah, I'd just like to, we've had a, a separate ceremony outside of the meeting, but yeah, a special mention to Adrian Grayling, our local controller for SES for his meritorious service award for, for SES. Great. Councillor Plum, anything that you'd like to ask? Uh, no, it's not, thank you. Councillor Peebles. Mr Mayor, I just further endorse what you said this morning about, uh, about Bob Marshall and his contribution to the Aramac community. Uh, for a lot of years it was, it was exceptional and um, it was a great loss to us. And, um, you know, I'm probably just personally here, I'd like to thank him don't come with us anymore for everything he did for, for that community. He was a, a great man for, for Aramac and the districts over there, and he'll be a, a loss to us all. Thank you. Councillor um, I'd like to just mention the Jericho Bush Bash, which I attended last weekend, well, not last weekend, the weekend before. It was a really good family, fun um, afternoon with jumping castles and a big maze that I've never seen before, but set sails and, and stalls, and they were entertained by Zach, the Zach Cross Band, which was a really good band, and they had, everyone got to enjoy um, that entertainment while they were um, eating their dinner was a really good family evening and I think the, the best part of that afternoon was just seeing the kids really enjoying themselves um, on those, those um, 
castles and mazes, but also they had the opportunity to interact with the band later in the afternoon and um, they were invited up onto the stage and they were singing and the families and the children, I think, all really um, created some treasured memories from that afternoon. Thank you, Council. Um, I just want to acknowledge a few, in very brief terms, a few things. I'd like to acknowledge the councillors and staff who attended the LGAQ conference in Gladstone. Um, I was a, very much a fly-in, fly-out, or drive-in, drive-out operative there, which is ironic given the makeup of that community, but I wasn't working with the aluminium schnolder, but um, both councillors who took uh, a number of days to uh, partake in the workshops, the, the elements of the conference, its information gathering, the, um, the networking, um, uh, with co-councillors from the broader region, um, and, and that was so sort of well done to councillors Rogers, Plum, and councillor Peoples, and also to CEO Shane. Um, apparently, his choice of music in the car is not real good. Uh, I appreciate them uh, doing that. I'd also like to have a shout out to the um, Buckle and um, Race Club for um, their hosting of a TAB meeting just recently. Um, which is midweek, um, which puts a drain on their volunteers, um, some of whom have to actually take annual leave to be able to do that. Um, the feedback I've had from a number of stakeholders and, and, and indeed non-racing goers about seeing Buck Hall and on the TV um, when they're sitting down at the sports club for lunch um, is publicity that money can't buy, um, even though it can if you have a look at our operational budget. Um, the money that it costs us to maintain the facility there is substantial and the investment in building it was even more so. Um, but events like that would have probably been improbable to see before that investment. Um, and, and having attended briefly on that day um, for a couple of races, the number of visitors to the community, ironically, on a midweek from places like Clomont, Charleville, uh, Springshaw, Emerald and Longridge, um, meant that there was actually a, re there's a, there's a return to the community directly um, or directly from the hosting of that. So well done to putting their hand up um, that, that they may have gone elsewhere, um, but they were rained out and they reaffirmed their intent to run and well done to all involved. Um, tomorrow we'll see the launch of the NBN Fibre to the Premises in Alpha, um, which Council is co-hosting along with the uh, NBN. Um, that is a, uh, a monumentous step forward for digital connectivity in regional Australia. Um, FTTP is not accessible in Australia by let more than 1% of the population. Um, so the internet speeds and um, improved tele telephony, telephony services in, in Alpha um, is a result of um, substantial investment by Council, NBN itself and the Federal Government. Um, so to see that launch um, is good and, and one can only hope that once we see the benefits of that, that we can then further see that rolled out in communities have access to fibre, including Mark Holden, because here is FTTN, fibre to the node. Um, we need to improve that. And then, as I mentioned, and another point I want to mention, um, uh, we need to then look at, and we are, NBN and Council are investigating solutions for further federal government funding to improve access to high-speed broadband internet in Aramac and Mudabar. Um, the Mudabar saw us parliamentary inquiry into the fossilised emblem of Queensland was undertaken in Winton and Mudabara just recently. Um, I represented council at both of those and, and a number of councillors obviously also joined in at Mudabara. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the work the federal, sorry, the state government is doing in that respect and the state parliament because it is a bipartisan support and despite the, um, the member for Richmond as he's effectively known, the member for Mermaid Beach, Ray Stevens, has referenced to the fact that there were other fossil emblems that could have been chosen, but he uh, was tongue in cheek and very supportive of the Mudabarasaurus. But th for them to take two days out of their schedule um, to expedite a hearing in both Winton and then again in Mudabara, and for the community of Mudabara to have the State Parliament visit there is a pretty special occurrence. Um, and, and obviously things like Hansard reflect um, Mrs Langdon's personal story around the discovery. So that's, um, that's a really special day and we can hope to see that enacted into legislation very quickly and, and that's um, big thing. Um, and I also want to also mention that um, councillors um, and staff and their families who attended the Festival of Small Balls um, out in Jericho just recently. So well done to supporting that and um, remind councillors and those who may be interested in watching this that the expressions of interest 
for the housing development that we've looked to release on the southern side of the Hinia Street is now open. Um, uh, there is an end date on that, but as I've said to everyone who listens, we will receive that right up until we make a decision. So I'd encourage people to promote that, um, whether it's via email, hand people a copy of the UI, it's going to be, you know, we're distributing it, but um, the more ways and methods of communication that people can use to help council facilitate the distribution of that, um, the broader chance we're getting to getting good feedback in and inform council's decision making process in that respect. But um, yeah, well done to all those groups and to the councillors who um, I believe you've been very busy as councillors, um, especially in attending events both within the council area but outside. So thank you very much. Ah, uh, looks like we've all thought of things now after we get around. Yes, Councillor Gleeson first. Excuse me, Mr Mayor. Um, I would just like to congratulate Council of Peoples um, at the other day at the LGAQ. Um, got the award for 25 years for um, serving the, our local shires. Also, in our, um, in our opening, we had a page full of uh, persons that have passed away in our, in our region. Um, we don't want to um, highlight anybody more than anybody else, but I just want to make it noted that one of the gentlemen was um, was Jim Warpass, and in my knowledge, I don't know whether I've ever I've ever come across a person so so active so active in our uh, in our communities. But um, Mr. Jim Warpass was a life member of the Buckland Show Society, life member of the Buckland Care Craft Society, life member of the Buckland West Tech, life member of the Buckland race course, a life member of the Mark Holden Cancer Foundation, and I don't know whether I've, I've ever come across anything like that. Um, I just want to make that acknowledge that what a wonderful man and what, what a wonderful thing that he did for our community and he will be sad and lost. Thank you. Yeah, well said. That's what people. Mr. Mayor, I just want to go back to one of your points with regards to the NBN. And yes. we've got it in Alpha and it's coming here. Uh, I was listening to Sean Radley this morning with regards to Augustella and Warm, where they've just put it in there. And that's direct too, as far as I understand. It is. Yeah. It is. So, with them being off the line a little, I guess they're not. So, if they're born into child, wouldn't come back out. That's how they've done it. Yeah. Okay. The driver was there, they just connected the community directly to it rather than here where it's connected to the. So the line is coming through this way and there's no chance of it going. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. No, there's a chance. There is a chance. It's just the... He said they put 600,000 in to get 6 million, which is... Yeah, we put... We put, um, we put 50 in to get 4 million, 50,000 in number for us. Yeah. Similar, same funding package. Yeah. 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 To get about the same amount, though. Yeah. I, like, I like what we did better. Yeah, okay. yeah. Right, so the possibility to do our Aramac and Two options on the technology that's currently available, but the third option you can't rule out is these low Earth orbit satellite Starlink type stuff, so yeah. that's yeah. being investigated. The, 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 the predominant option for communities that don't immediately overlay fiber optic or are too far to extend it is um, fixed wireless, and there's some very good results with fixed wireless. Um, you know, right through, especially in sort of mountainous terrain areas down in New South Wales and Victoria where direct line sites are difficult. Fixed wireless towers provide super fast internet. Um, and the other one is with the uh, advent of major transmission, powering transmission infrastructure. Um, on every one of those big lines is fiber optic cable. So that, if something like that was to manifest in an area, it would give you direct access to vast quantities of fiber optic, which... But that would be something like copper stream or... Exactly. Yeah. And then the federal state government announced um, $25 million about four weeks ago um, to expand accessibility options to their power infrastructure network. Okay. Yeah. And that's the work that NBN and myself are undertaking now is to look at what's the best fit with current technology, but don't hamstring yourself with what could be coming at the same time. No, I was just interested to listen to um, Zorro this morning on the radio when he was saying how it got into more than a hill, so Augustella, and um, but the line went to Charlton and then come back out, so I can understand that now. And we were unsuccessful in the most recent round, seeking funding to put fixed walls to Aramac NB and committed, and we committed, but we weren't successful. Yep. All right. 
Can you listen there one last thing? Yes. You know, um, Australia Day Awards coming up. Maybe it's time to get out there for nominations. While we're talking about this sort of stuff, just for a moment, we need to get it out there for nominations again. Yeah, that's already out there. Yeah, but individually we need to keep promoting that and people listening will look at look at what we can find in it through. Thanks, Debbie, for saying it's out there. Yeah. Good. Councillor Hanson. The CEO, because he doesn't have the right to speak during these sessions, has handed me a note to acknowledge those people who entered the garden competition as well. Um, I should have also attended to that, so well done to those people who just entered, um, as well as those people who were successful, and well done to Cameron and her team for hosting um, that in Alphonse. So. All right, three questions. Can I have somebody move the information correspondence to be received? I believe lunch is here already. Set up early. Oh, thank you, Councillor Rogers. Second to Councillor Plum. Those in favour? 7 0. Right. Is there any? This can all be taken as read unless any of you have got individual questions. Councillor Plum, you can take your lunch to the front veranda if you like. Unless you'll get it hot. You might simply move 352 to be received. Councillor uh, Gleeson, second to Councillor Hanson. Those in favour? 6 0. Thank you. Yes, just about everything there is, as normal, most of them are code assessments. Maybe we'll just take a bit of a to get them done. I'll just point you to 1.1 that's happening at the moment. That's obviously the discussion we're having around the present model. Council Plum didn't get long to have a lunch. Can somebody ring it back inside, please? Would have been no good for you, Councillor Arthur, if this is one of your four A's outside to have lunch taken off you so fast. I was borderline before us thinking about asking Jenny to cancel my lunch or to see Smoke. I was so late, but it's probably turned up. See you late. Sorry, Councillor. No, I'm good. Can I put it back? No, no we, can. we can probably break up for this report anyway. It's there. 353, can I somebody move the economic development report, please? Thank you, Councillor Hanson. Second of Councillor Gleeson, those in favour? 7 0. Is there a report from Abel Gordon Olson? What is he working on? Um, the work that was done recently, and Councillor Rogers was um, part of this brief discussion up there to promote um, Barky Red, as you see down the bottom of the first page. Um, it'd be really exciting to see um, what flows from that and have some good discussion around how we further promote that and cross pollinate it with their own unique social media, but also um, how the, uh, the concept of riding for free is something unique in that sport, but something that will be equally well received and to have people come and riding on it and really enjoying the experience <coughs> means that the work that's gone into developing that site is very good. And, as we've always said, we develop one, and if the concept works, there's absolutely no reason now that we've got the template that the same thing can't be rolled out right across the council region to uh, encourage whether people come and ride all five, or they ride one this year and another one next visit. Um, that opportunity on all four of the five of our town commons. Sorry. All right. Um, further questions? Because. I might adjourn if we have lunch. I just had a message from Tim Fines Clinton, so I'll give him a call, resolve that issue, and then we'll come back to <coughs> those two deferred agenda items. We'll um, adjourn for lunch. <coughs>